Kia ora koutou, e Stufano, and mere krihi me te for 2021. I'm Viv Coleman, and I'm here to lead an intergenerational Christmas Eve service for our Eastview family. It has to be virtual this year, but I've used some of the words and songs that we often share at five o'clock on Christmas Eve. So those of you who turn up to those events will hopefully feel at home. Welcome also to anyone else who's joining us this year. Hopefully the service includes something for everyone. But of course, if it doesn't, you can just fast forward the video. We've got a little prayer to share to begin our service. Let's start together. Loving God, you have come to us in Jesus Christ. Now we come to you to offer our worship, to listen to your word, and to reflect on your love. May what was news of great joy 2,000 years ago bring new joy to us today. Well, if you remember, we've been lighting an Advent wreath for the last four Sundays. And on Christmas Day, if you're not watching it, on Christmas Day, we'll light the Christ candle because he is the one who brings us the hope, peace, love and joy that we've been sharing about during Advent. I wonder if you noticed that this shot was of McLaren's house last Sunday, when at one point the lads all went out to deliver some party presents to other Eastview folk and left the candles burning a little too close to the pine cones. I think many of us watched on Zoom in apprehension. But no, the fire brigade wasn't needed. However, let's take a light-hearted look at some other Christmas decorations. Hey, neighbor, you need a hand? I'm, I'm good, thanks. Don't worry, I'm coming. Santa's little helper's on his way! Hey! Ha <laughs> ha! So you got the star that'll guide Chris Kringle to your chimney. Good move, my man. Oh, uh... No, it's the, uh, star, star of Bethlehem. Right, yeah. Bethlehem, North Pole. Same thing, right? Oh. Nope. Uh, no. Uh, 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 sorry. It's the, uh, the star that, you know, the Magi. Right. Magi. What is the Magi? I found something on the web about emojis. Check it uh, out. Uh, the Magi? The, uh, the, the wise men who came to see the Messiah. The, the, the Christ? The, uh, the Son of God. Then he would grow up to become Santa. No, no, no. He's gonna grow up and he's gonna pay for the sins of the world. Guess that'd be a pretty hefty price tag, huh? Hmm. Yeah. That's why it's called Christmas. christ -mas. Well, I wish you would've told me all this before I spent my Christmas bonus and all that junk over there. Thanks a lot. Merry Christmas. No, I, I... <laughs> you look like my Santa! <laughs> you thought that was a bit cheeky for a Baptist church? Then here's the real Christmas story that we're focusing on this weekend. Adventures often happen when you least expect them. And it was in the quiet town of Nazareth where a girl called Mary started her unexpected adventure. She was alone one day when suddenly she found herself face to face with an angel who had some interesting news. Mary was going to have a baby. And this is where it got real interesting because the baby 
was to be God's son. Now Mary's fiancé, Joseph, he took some convincing that this was for real. But eventually, after meeting an angel himself, he realised this was an adventure for him too. Every good adventure needs a journey, right? Well, for Mary, this meant sitting on a donkey and travelling for days to a town called Bethlehem, the place God had chosen for his son to be born. I mean, you'd expect somewhere pretty glamorous for such an occasion, right? But Mary and Joseph found themselves cooped up in none other than a stable, surrounded by the mooing of cows, the bleating of sheep, and soon, the cries of a little baby boy. Elsewhere, there were some other folks being drawn into this adventure themselves. On a nearby hillside, some shepherds were having their own face-to-face -face with an angel. While in a far-off desert, some travellers had discovered an intriguing star in the sky. Both the angel and the star beckoned them to Bethlehem. Soon the stable was filled with these visitors who found themselves bowing down and worshipping the baby. They couldn't help it, for his name was Jesus, and he was to be God's own great adventure on earth. An unexpected adventure, of course, but one that would change the world forever. And now, let's sing a favourite carol, Away in a Manger. This year's theme for the service, I've decided to take a look at some of the decorations that I put on my Christmas tree. We put one up every year, but when our kids were young, it was always a real tree, usually a pine dug up off the side of a country road because we lived up north. But over time, we found that was a bit messy and it didn't always stay fresh the whole of December. So since we've been in Auckland, we have a nice artificial one and they last a very long time. One of the reasons we as Christians use an evergreen tree for Christmas is to remind us of the everlasting love of God, love that never gets tired or weary or dried out. There's a verse in Psalm 103 that says, the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, to their children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. So we're going to start off with the bare tree a couple of days ago and add the decorations one by one. Here's one local family doing it in super quick time on, I think, round about the 1st of December.
Well, my tree is going to take a bit longer. The first thing that I put on was the Christmas lights. I, I've got six strings of these and it is quite a challenge to find out where the ends connect and to make sure there are some lights on every branch of the tree. But the lights are very important to the Christmas story. And they are, of course, beautiful for a real festive feel. And I'm so glad that we have electric bulbs now and not the burning candles that people used to put on the trees in centuries gone by. Imagine how risky that was. The reason we celebrate with lights at all, though, is to bring to mind the fact that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. In ancient pagan rituals, candles celebrated the light of the sun and the continuation of life during dark winter times. But for Christians, we recognize that it is our Savior who lights the way in dark times, whether it's seasonal or spiritual. How do we connect this to the nativity story? Well, the prophet Isaiah wrote about this a very long time ago before Jesus was born. So let's hear it. Well, there was once a man called Isaiah, and his name meant God to the rescue. Now, that might sound like a bit of a funny name to you, but it was just the right name for Isaiah because God had a special job for Isaiah. You see, Isaiah's job was to listen to God and then tell people what he heard. Now, God let Isaiah know a secret. God was going to mend his broken world. He showed Isaiah his secret rescue plan, Operation No More Tears. This is the message God gave Isaiah. It was like a letter God wrote to his children. Dear little flock, you're all wandering away from me, like sheep in an open field. You have always been running away from me, and now you're lost. You can't find your way back. But I can't stop loving you. I will come to find you, so I'm sending you a shepherd to look after you and love you, to carry you home to me. You've been stumbling around like people in a dark room, but into the darkness a bright light will shine. It will chase away all the shadows like sunshine. A little baby will be born, a royal son. His mummy will be a young girl who doesn't have a husband. His name will be Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. He is one of King David's children's children's children the Prince of Peace. Yes, someone is going to come and rescue you, but he won't be who anyone expects. He will be a king, but he won't live in a palace, and he won't have lots of money. He will be poor, and he will be a servant, but this king will heal the whole world. He will be a hero. He will fight for his people and rescue them from their enemies but he won't have big armies, and he won't fight with swords. He will make the blind see, he will make the lame leap like deer. He will make everything the way it was always meant to be. But people will hate him, and they won't listen to him. He will be like a lamb, he will suffer and die. It's the secret rescue plan we made, from before the beginning of the world. It's the only way to get you back. Yes, well, Jesus truly is the light of the world, promised long before he was born. Prophets spoke of his coming and of his relevance as the light that would shatter all darkness. And at the time of Jesus' birth, the people of God needed some light to shatter their darkness. They were oppressed and downtrodden. They needed hope. And the birth of Jesus shows them and us that God can be trusted to fulfill his promises. You might not know this worship song, but you can join in the hand actions. For to us a child is born.
So the lights are up. What else did I have in my box of decorations? An angel. In the Bible, it's Luke's gospel that tells us Mary's story, one that started with an angel, an angel who surprised her by saying she, a young girl, was going to have a special baby. Then her fiancé, Joseph, had a dream where an angel reassured him this was no mistake, that it was all part of God's plan. The special baby was born in a town called Bethlehem. And next, we saw another angel appear on a hillside where shepherds were guarding their sheep overnight. That angel announced the good news that Jesus was born and that they would find him lying in a manger, a feeding trough. Then the whole sky filled with more angels singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth to those with whom his favour rests. So. That little angel, and I had a bigger one as well, reminds us that the first people, apart from Joseph and Mary, to know about the special baby were simple shepherds. And they ran to the town and they did indeed find the new family in a place where animals were kept, most likely a cave, as we saw in our paper nativity. And there was baby Jesus lying in a manger, a food trough. Let's sing about that. Years ago, in a stable far away, Christ the Lord was born. What a joyful day! Singing filled the air, glory shone around. Shepherds on the hillside were punished by the sound. Have no fear, have you heard? Christ is born today. Go and see him lying there in a manger filled with hay. Hey, then the skies came alive, angels everywhere. Singing hymns of joyful praise to the God who sent them there. On to Bethlehem, in a most exciting way, shepherds went to see Christ the Lord that day. When they saw him there, they were filled with joy. On their knees they worshipped him, God's special baby boy. Have no fear, have you heard? Christ is born today. Singing hymns of joyful praise to the God who sent them there. Singing hymns of joyful praise to the God who sent them there. God who sent them there. Okay. Well, what else is there in my box of decorations? A lovely star. And this other one that the Hutchies gave me, it's from Nepal where they used to live. My favourite star doesn't fit on the tree. It hangs outside. It's one I got in Germany. And one year at Christmas Eve, we talked about the factory in Saxony where they've been making those heron hoot stars for a very long time. Well, where does the star come into our Christmas story? 
Some of the carols remind us of the night sky that was probably lit up by starlight, but it's actually Matthew's gospel who introduces us to the Magi or wise men who noticed a new star in the sky above their home a very long way away. Their traditions told them that this meant a new king had been born and they set off to find him, probably taking many months or even years. The King of All Kings Far away in the east, three clever men saw the very same star, the star that God had put in the sky when Jesus was born. They knew it was a sign. A baby king had been born. At dawn, they packed up their camels and wrapped gifts for the baby. They brought their most precious treasures of all, frankincense, gold and myrrh, special, sparkly, lovely, smelling, gleaming things, just right for a king. The three wise men, actually, if you'd met them, you'd have thought they were kings because they were so rich and clever and important looking. Anyway, they set off. They rode their camels across endless deserts, up steep, steep mountains, down into deep, deep valleys, through raging rivers, over grassy plains, night and day and day and night, for hours that turned into days, that turned into weeks, that turned into months and months, until at last they reached Jerusalem. Jerusalem was by far the most important city for miles around. And as anyone can tell you, that's where a palace would be and kings are born in palaces. So that's where they went. But they were in for a surprise. They went to see King Herod. Surely he'd know where this baby was, but he didn't. In fact, he didn't like the sound of a new king. It made him cross. He didn't want anyone to be king except him. But Herod's advisers told the three wise men what was written in their books, what God had said about the baby king. Go to Bethlehem. That's where you'll find him. Suddenly, the star they had seen in the east started moving again, showing them the way. So the three wise men followed the star out of the big city, along the road, into the little town of Bethlehem. There, sitting on his mother's knee, they found him the baby king. The three men knelt before the little king. They took off their rich royal turbans and gleaming golden crowns. They bowed their noble heads to the ground and gave him their sparkling treasures. The journey that had begun so many centuries before had led three wise men here to a little town to a little house, to a little child, to the king God had promised David all those years before. But this child was a new kind of king. Though he was the prince of heaven, he had become poor. Though he was the mighty God, he had become a helpless baby. This king hadn't come to be the boss. He had come to be a servant. Matthew tells us that the star led them in the right direction, although not straight to Bethlehem. They went to Jerusalem, which is where they would expect to find a royal baby. And there they had to get past King Herod, who had something more nasty in mind for the baby king. His advisors, though, knew their Bible and sent the seekers on to Bethlehem just a few kilometres away. And Matthew tells us the star guided them to the exact house where the little family was now living. That was a special star indeed. Well, what did I have next? A tree decoration shaped like a present. We know that three gifts turn up in the story of the wise men. You remember them? And it's often led us to think that perhaps there were only three in the group but it's likely there were many more travellers from the east since they would have needed a lot of support to journey all those months. The three gifts we know about were gold, 
frankincense and myrrh. And today, giving and receiving presents is an important part of Christmas. And I can see that there are already some sent from um, other family members who live in faraway parts of New Zealand. However, even the best of our human presence can't compare with the best gift of all. The baby who would grow up to be an amazing human being, one that we now recognize as being God's son, sent from heaven to implement God's rescue plan. So remember that as we give and receive gifts, that God blesses us in many ways in spite of a pretty challenging year. It's time to sing happy birthday to Jesus. Happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday to the Lord. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to the Lord. Happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday to the Remember Isaiah, at the beginning this evening, or whenever you're watching this, he told us to expect a special prince, a special leader, one who would rescue people and who would show us how to live God's way. And you know, what he said at the end of that was quite interesting. Actually, we didn't read this part. He said, the secret rescue plan that we made from before the beginning of the world was the only way to get you back. That's because God wanted to have a relationship with us. He wanted us to be a family together. And so, even though there was some sadness in the story of Jesus, that didn't stay sad. Jesus didn't stay dead. God made him alive again. The gift of God was the rescuer who came at the first Christmas and has promised to come again. So Isaiah says, watch out for him. Well, there's one more decoration that I found. I mean, I found lots more, as you can see, but one that I'm going to talk about. And it's a bell. That's the last decoration that I'm going to show you. Are there any bells in the Christmas story? Well. Not specifically, but remember what the angels sang to the shepherds. Good news for all people. In many parts of the world, the bells in churches or town halls are used to announce important news. Weddings, royal babies, even winning a war. So I'm going to use this bell and some others to remember that Christmas is not just good food, good friends, 
good presents, but good news. News of God's love for everyone made real in a little baby who would change the world. I don't know if you remember this song. If you were in our show a few years ago, you just might, but it's very easy to sing. Let's join in and sing Bring Out the Bells. finish with this lovely prayer. It's put next to a recent painting that represents a hopeful Christmas in New Zealand with peace, love and joy as well. And the lovely Pahuta car, which is just our own very special decoration in the Kiwi summer. Let us pray. Living God, we praise you for the Christmas story and for the people whose lives were changed that day in Bethlehem. Thank you for Mary's faith, Joseph's commitment, the angel's joy and the shepherd's obedience. Show us how the glad tidings shared that day are good news for us all today. God, giver of all good things, we remember how the wise men travelled far to bring Jesus the first Christmas presents. Tomorrow, as we open our gifts, help us to thank you for the love that comes into our lives and the gifts that we can share. Amen. Here it is, my finished Christmas tree, and it looks gorgeous. Good night, everyone. Have a Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. Bye. <laughs>